Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel, where we review stories that beautiful people like yourselves, and yes, I do mean you, post on the internet. Alright, let's get into our first story, we got three of those for you today. So let's jump right into it. I, 27, come from a family of four. My mother, father, older brother, and myself. My family is well off. We have the money. Throughout my life, my brother, 29, has been the golden child. He's the one who gets the attention. More praise, more everything. The golden child of the family is what you may call him. Naturally, I was the one who was denied the attention and all the privileges my brother got. Growing up, my father and mother always favored him too. They provided everything for him, and I often found myself envious of my brother. My mom spoiled him with all the new toys and clothes in the market, while I ended up with all of his old stuff. When we grew up, my parents provided all the tuition fees for him, and made sure that he attended one of the best schools. I, on the other hand, worked really hard to get a scholarship for my further studies, something that my parents didn't bat an eye about. When I and my brother grew up and eventually got jobs and started working, my parents still favored him. Eventually, we both moved out. I ended up as a software engineer, while he, let's just say all the lavishes that my mom and dad provided for him, brought him to the core. In the desperation of getting attention from my parents, I worked really hard throughout my life and secured a good life. My parents didn't see this though. They still were attached to my brother and soon enough, they cut off ties with me but continued to stay in touch with my brother. The last time I moved out, my brother still lived with my parents. Apparently, my parents didn't want him to leave and offered to stay with him, an offer he didn't refuse. According to my parents, my brother was a big time business world who was very rich and made a good name for himself. Another reason why my parents favored him more is because they think he's richer and more successful than me. But they do not know the actual reality. So after a month or so, I received a call from my parents. Now this was very unusual seeing the fact that they almost never contacted me, unless it's some sort of occasion like Christmas or Thanksgiving. So I picked up the call and my mother was on the other side of the call. She asked me about my day and how it'd been. This sounded very unusual to me, and very new since they almost never call me so casually, but I was not complaining. I asked my mom if she and dad had been doing well, and if my brother was doing well too. I noticed how my mother avoided answering any questions related to my brother. She then proceeded to ask me if I was free this coming Sunday, and if I would like to join my parents for lunch at their house. I obviously agreed, maybe this was my chance to finally spill all the bad deeds my brother has done over the past few years and make my parents hate him and finally favor me more. Sunday rolled in and I went to my parents' house at noontime. I greeted my parents and my brother. Surprisingly, my parents welcomed me quite warmly and my brother just seemed a little embarrassed and pissed off. I really don't know what was up with them. I chatted with my parents and they asked me about my work and how I've been living. I told them about everything. I really liked the attention I was receiving. My parents actually seemed to be interested in my life and it just made me very happy. My mom even prepared my favorite roasted chicken, even though she knew my brother didn't like it. During lunch, we were just chatting and my brother just silently ate. Although I was very happy, I knew something was wrong. Finally, I asked my mom and dad if they were doing alright, and if there had been something wrong going on in the house. This was the point where my parents' faces morphed into one of anger and sadness. My dad then revealed how my brother had just turned out to be a huge disappointment. I was shocked. I thought they finally discovered the truth, so I inquired further about it. Turns out, my parents had been super embarrassed by my brother. The story they told me was of how my brother got super drunk during a party. Keep in mind that he would always emphasize the fact that he does not drink or smoke to my parents. Not only was he drunk out of his mind, but he also drove back home irresponsibly and ran into the neighbor's mailbox. Then he started shouting and cursing on the street, causing a huge commotion in the neighborhood. My parents had a hard time getting him back into the house. Even after entering the house, he called my mom a b-word and passed out in the living room. The day after, he had a hangover and my parents were very disappointed in him. While my mom told me the story, my brother just sat in the corner, obviously embarrassed of what he had done. At this point, my mother and father were in tears. Although it may not be a very big deal in other families, it was in us because my parents had high hopes for my brother. They loved him a lot more than they loved me. I just saw the scene unfold 
My dad was comforting my mom. Then my dad asked me if I could forgive them for favoring my brother more. He and my mom apologized to me and told me that they loved me and that I was better than my brother. My brother was sobbing at this point. He tried to apologize to our parents, but my parents didn't bat an eye at his half-hearted apology. I could have forgiven them, but I could not bring myself to do so. This was the time of revenge for me, for my childhood. They devoted me to loving my brother more. I simply laughed at their faces and told them how they have repeated what they saw. I told them that it was wrong of them to favor my brother more than me. I was enjoying this way more than I would like to admit. Finally, my parents could see the real face of my brother, but this was just the beginning. I then proceeded to reveal more secrets about my brother. I told him how my brother was also an alcoholic and used to come back home drunk at night and I used to take care of him. I told him that my brother had just faced a loss and now his business is over. I told him how he had been living on their money for a very long time now. I spilled all his secrets. They were shocked, their faces lost their color. My job was done so I picked up my belongings and left my parents house. I felt content and happy. I went back home and slept peacefully that night. The next morning, I woke up to about 50 calls and texts from my mom and dad, both of them apologizing to me and asking me to come back to them. I ignored their messages and went ahead with my day. I was feeling extra happy, it almost felt like someone lifted a huge burden off my chest. I went to work and was extra productive. I came back home and was about to start dinner when I received a call from my brother. This was new since I didn't receive any other messages or calls from him. I was about to hang up, but something told me that I should pick it up. So I did. I talked to my brother for the first time after a very long. You see, due to our upbringing, I was never close to him. I was always jealous of him. I picked up the call and he started shouting at me, telling me how I ruined his life and how mom and dad threw him out of their home. I replied to him that he deserved what he got. My brother was angry. I could feel that from the tone of his voice. He started threatening me about how he was going to ruin my life and made sure I regretted what I did. I just laughed at him, knowing he could never do anything like that. I asked him to stay away from me and never call me again, otherwise I would go to the police. He, out of fear, obliged. After a week or so, my parents were adamant about hearing from me, so I finally called them back. My dad picked up the call. He told me how they kicked my brother out of their house. He also told me that my mom hasn't been doing very well after the whole situation. He repeatedly apologized to me and asked me to come back or at least talk to them. Now, I didn't like my parents very much, but this new attention was very addicting to me. My dad told me how he would give me anything I desired if I just came back to them. The offer was rather tempting. I told him I would only come back to them if they completely cut off my brother. My dad hurriedly agreed to me. I told them I would visit them in a day or two since I had work. I would be lying if I said I wasn't worried about my mom's health. I went to my parents' house after three days. The house looked in a better condition. My dad welcomed me and directed me towards the room my mom was resting in. I sat with my mom. She told me that she was sorry for the way she treated me in the past. She admitted that she was wrong for all the things she did, for favoring my brother more. I asked her if she had heard back from my brother ever since that evening, and she simply replied, that she had no interest in talking about that disgrace. Weirdly enough, her answer satisfied me. I ordered food for us, and we all had a good evening full of laughter and talks. I was glad my parents finally saw who my brother really was and even cut off ties with him because I said so. My parents asked if I could move in with them, to which I refused since I like my home better, but I promised them that I would visit them religiously. This was the first time I felt at peace. It has been over three months since I met my relationship with my parents. I have been visiting them every weekend and we've gone on some trips and have been pretty happy. Life was going good. One Saturday, while I was at my parents' house, my dad got a call from my brother. We all were quite surprised to hear from him since he hadn't tried to contact us for a long time. Not that we cared about it anyway. My dad picked up the call and blatantly asked him his purpose for calling. My brother said something on the other side, while my dad had a neutral face, but I could still spot some sad emotions on his face. My dad didn't say anything when he ended the call. He came back and sat with us, and my mom asked what happened. My dad then revealed that my brother called him to tell him that he had improved and had asked him for forgiveness. My mom was shocked. Even I was shocked. 
My brother wasn't someone who would swallow their pride and make an apology. I guess circumstances do change people because my mom immediately called my brother. They had a long chat. She even invited him for dinner, to which he agreed. At dinner, my brother came and politely greeted everyone. He even greeted me with a brotherly hug. We all sat down and had dinner. I was still skeptical of my brother, so I asked him what his intentions were. To which he replied that he came in peace, and that he actually wanted to start fresh without any sort of problems between our families. I felt happy listening to this. My parents apologized to both of us for not being better at parenthood. They apologized for favoring one and being the other. I too apologized for no particular reason, but it felt right. After such a long time, I finally felt better about our family and thought that I wanted to keep building this sweet family. But I always do think I was unable for exposing my brother like that and abandoning my family first. I think you're the a-hole, but at least it solved your problems so things got better, lol. No, you are not the a-hole, you were just honest and just did what you had to do. May peace be with you. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video so far and you want to be a real a-hole to the like button, go ahead and invite them over in a safari, and when you finally get to the part where the lions are, throw them out of the car and just speed off. Alright, let's get into our next story. Disneyland has this thing where people with disabilities get different treatment with regard to lines. It works out great for us. My wife has two kids from before. They also love Disneyland. When we go as a family, we get faster access to some rides together. And when they want to go on a ride she doesn't like, my wife can get in line with them. And we meet up afterward. Sometimes we switch, and my wife will take my son around while I wait in line with my stepkids. However, when my wife or one of my sisters can't come with us, I just take my son. My wife has also taken just her kids when my son doesn't want to go. He has also taken just my stepkids and left my son with my sisters when he didn't feel like going out in public. This last weekend, I had time to go to the park and my son asked. I asked my wife, but she didn't want to go. I checked with my sisters, but they were busy. So I took my son without my stepkids. When we got home, my in-laws were there fighting with my wife. The kids had called them and said that I was excluding them from going to Disneyland. The thing is, they never volunteered to watch the kids when we go. They hate the crowds and lines. They said that I'm treating their grandchildren like they are less important than my son. My wife, who was dealing with a migraine, was almost in tears. I helped my son get cleaned up and put him to bed. Then I came back and tore a strip off of them. I said that their grandkids are children and do not understand yet why they cannot always get their way, but that they are adults and presumably are able to understand why I couldn't take the three kids by myself. I couldn't leave my son, and my stepkids are too young to wander the park by themselves. I volunteered to take them next time, so they could watch their grandchildren while I took care of my son. Or they could watch my son and I would wait in line with the kids. They said they didn't want to do that, but still said I was being an a-hole not taking their grandchildren. So I presented another option. They could pay for a helper to come with us for the day. That way, if my wife can come, I can still take the kids. I did ask that they also pay for the days I could not go, so my wife could take all three kids. They said that I was being ridiculous. So I told them unless they were willing to help, they could stay the F out of how we did things in our family. I went and talked to the kids and told them that I understood why they called their grandparents, but that they had to learn that sometimes they would have to not go to stuff until they were old enough to be saved by themselves. I made sure they knew I wasn't mad at them and said that I would take them the next time I could schedule it. My wife said I was right in how I handled stuff, but that her parents were mad at me for putting them in their place. Sounds like you and your wife are doing everything right. So nice to read about a couple in a blended family who have each other's back for once. Wishing you a very long and happy marriage and a happy healthy family. Your in-laws can go piss up a row. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Disneyland is a lot to deal with. We used to go a lot when my kids were younger. I'm not sure what the situation is with your stepkids, age, behavior, or needs, but if you don't feel like you could take care of three kids on your own, knowing them as well as you do, that's obviously the right call. The stepkids are being a little bratty by calling the grandparents to cause trouble, and the grandparents are definitely out of line. You handled the situation perfectly from my perspective. My wife is legally blind, and I'm severely limited in movement due to damage to my nervous system. Things like this greatly affect the options you have available. It's always the people that are not willing to help that know best. Five years after my wife lost her sight, 
she can only make out faint outlines. My mother-in-law still insists she has to drive the kids wherever they want to go. I refuse to even entertain this idea. It's beyond ridiculous. I guess it comes back to until you walk a mile in someone else's shoes. You did nothing wrong and handled the situation very well. Wish you all the best for the future. Definitely not the A-hole. Alright, let's get into our final story for today. My brother is getting married in May. My brother and I aren't super closed and haven't been for a long time. I moved to another state over 13 years ago. He has never been here, met my husband or any of that. I just occasionally see him when I visit my grandma. I have met his fiancée a few times and she's fine, but we are just very different people in very different lives and priorities. She is great for my brother, he's happy, I'm happy for them. She is very high maintenance and is all about her dream wedding and being the princess. It's all she talks about and has been since they got engaged. She knew he was going to propose so she got her hair and makeup done and hired a cameraman for the surprise proposal and has like four of the pictures framed in her living room of her looking surprised. Anyway, she's excitedly asking me to be the bridesmaid and while weddings are really, really not my thing, literally got married in the kitchen by some lady we found on the internet two days prior. I said yes because it seemed important to her and I figured it would mean a lot to my brother. So I put on my helpful hat and jumped into the group chats and whatnot. The group chats never stop, like ever. I am expected to fly down to dress shopping and other important bridesmaid duties, including rehearsing a flash mod dance. Anyways, I got pregnant, and after everyone found out, sister-in-law called me and told me the bridesmaid dresses she wanted to use for the wedding were going to be very form-fitting, and I probably wouldn't be comfortable being pregnant at all, and basically let me know I was no longer needed for the wedding party. But great news! I can still help with all the bridesmaids duties. Now here is where I may be the able. As she was going on about how I would still be an honorary bridesmaid and I could still help with planning and the showers and the bachelorette party and all, I cut her off. I was in a bad mood and said, look honestly I really didn't want to be in the wedding in the first place. So I'm actually relieved I don't have to deal with it anymore. Apparently that upset her and made her cry, which led to an angry call from my brother who said if I didn't apologize to her, I would not be invited to the wedding. I am considering not apologizing and not having to travel to be at the wedding at this point. So, am I the a-hole? She was expecting a lot from you, too much. Once you were demoted, why didn't she lean on another bridesmaid? Either she knows there are flakes or she thought you were a pushover. The next time your brother calls to complain about not helping with this wedding, ask him, what's my husband's middle name? Or who does my husband work for? Or some other simple trivia to know that your relationships need both parties to put in the work. Not the a-hole. To be honest, I think you really should have just said no from the start if you really don't like weddings at all to save yourself from all this drama. And everything up until that conversation about the dress sounds pretty typical. But the bride was being unreasonable by removing you from being a bridesmaid, yet still expected your help. You did blindside her though by agreeing to be the bridesmaid initially only to rudely say I never wanted to anyway when you found an opportunity to do so. It was more hurtful than what was called for. ESH ESH You for saying yes when you wanted to say no from the beginning. You should have said no. You weren't being rude to yourself or honest with them about your wants and needs. Your sister-in-law is the biggest a-hole here for casting you aside when you got pregnant because the dress would be too form-fitting or whatever but then also expecting you to do things for the wedding. That's very entitled and hurtful of her. Your brother is also unable for demanding an apology for expressing yourself. Although I think you should have said no from the beginning, being honest and blunt wasn't the part that made you an able. And I think it's ridiculous that he would uninvite you if you don't apologize. That's controlling and manipulative behavior. Alright guys, that's it for today's stories. Thank you very much for tuning in today. If you have a story of your own, be sure to send us an email. Email is down in the description. Also, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more stories like this one. Thank you for watching and we will be seeing you in the next one.